talking about miracles. Acts 19. Acts 19, verses 11 to 12. Acts 19, verses 11 to 12. The NIV version, if we can. The NIV. Acts 19, 11 to 12. The N-I-V. God is a good God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning, this special day. We ask that you speak to us your word. Let your word do us good. Let your word transform lives, heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, set captives free in the name of Jesus. Let your word yield forth extraordinary miracles. In the name of Jesus, we give you the praise and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Acts 19, 11 to 12. Are we there? 11. Let's read it together if we can get to your Bibles. Now, God, the NIV version. You don't have the NIV. It is well. I will read the NIV. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. God will do extraordinary miracles also in your life. This year, in the name of Jesus, God worked unusual. The new King Vince version on the screen. But the NIV says, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. And that is my prayer for us today and for the rest of this year. That God will do extraordinary miracles in your life also. In Jesus' name. This morning, I want to share briefly on seven fundamental laws of life. Seven what? Seven fundamental laws of life. In this year of extraordinary miracle, there are some laws that we have to work with. Biblical laws. Hallelujah. We have to apply them, work with them for us to have the extraordinary. Seven fundamental laws for us to succeed, to, 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 to enjoy this extraordinary life that God has promised. Job 36 verse 11 says, if you do obey, Job 36 verse 11, if you do obey and serve this God, you will spend all your days extraordinarily, hallelujah, in prosperity. If you do obey and serve this God, you will spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasures. Hallelujah. And that is my prayer for you. Your duty is to obey these laws. Number one law, the royal law. The royal what? Law. Royalty. And this talks about love. It's a commandment to love others as you love yourself. If you must have the best of this year, you must obey the royal law. You must be able to love people. You must love people just as you love yourself. God so loved the world, John 3.16, that he was, he gave his only begotten son and that whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have an extraordinary life, an everlasting life, an eternal life. So first major law is the what? The royal law. James 2.8 says, if you really fulfill the new King James Version, James 2.8, if you really fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
first law is what? The royal law. And that centers on love. How do you love yourself when you've been with someone like in a place like this for three months? You don't even know ten people. You are just within yourself. You must be purposeful in loving people. Approach people. I am this. Smile. Laugh. Amen. Love. How can I be of help to you, sister, brother? Amen. There's a vacancy in your workplace. Comfort and get it to the household of faith. Bless somebody with that information. Am I right? That is love. And as you begin to open doors for others, amazing doors will open for you. That is how it works. There's an accommodation coming up to be free next door. Quickly, take all of it. Landlord, please, don't give it out. Don't advertise it. I have somebody. Then you come to the household of faith and amen. So what? Show love. Matthew 5, 43 to 48 talks about the fact that we must even love our enemies. We must love the unlovable. That is the point. Even those that hate you, love them. Even those that abuse you, love what? Love the unlovable. Your boss, love her, love him. Your subordinates, love them. Your peers, love them. You must Love, show love. So number one, what did I say? The royal law. Number two, the golden rule. The golden rule. It talks about the fact that if you want success, you must help someone to succeed. Period. You want to have an extraordinary life this year? You must open doors for people. You want success. You want the best of life. You must do it for somebody. I'll tell you a story. We, we arrived in the U.S. in August 2005. We came back. My viva last days just on 11 months. 28, there about 26, we came back. First week of December, we had the viva. Past the next week, I graduated. The next day, we flew back to the U.S. Thursday, the ninth of December. Tenth, we arrived in the U.S. Miami, Florida. Eleventh, we were in church. There was a program in the church. A preacher, one of my fathers, bishop priest. Owen Asare from Ghana. He was doing a five-day program in the church. A parish in Miami. Then DM preached first service on, on, on a Saturday morning. Second service, he called us out. He called me out. He said, young man, do you know who you are? He asked the pastor. He's my, one of my ministers. Three things that he said. Young man, I'm calling you because three things God will do. In three years, you will go into full-time ministry. And I said, I laughed. You don't know me. You don't what? I've just returned back from the UK yesterday with a PhD. I'm here to make what? As an African, I've walked through life, finished PhD in the, in the UK, just graduated, Arrive in the U.S. the next day and yet you are telling me three years, I will not make use of all this. Look at this lying prophet. Number one. Number two, he said your first child will be a boy. That one is 50-50. Boy or girl. No big deal. Am I right? No big deal. If it doesn't happen the first time, second one will be a boy. Amen or whatever. 
no big deal, whatever. No big deal. I look at him. Then number three, now we are doing it now, before I will not say it, you'll be doing crusades. Healing ministries. Healing outreaches. So the first one was our first son. That was the first one. The first child. We had finished law school, graduated, time for babies. We had our first two years just ourselves. That's what some of you are rushing to it as well. Sharp, sharp, it is well. We had wanted to enjoy it, at least two of us alone enjoyed. Hot, hot weather, Miami, enjoying the honeymoon, extended two year honeymoon. So the, she was pregnant after two years and uh, went to the hospital, scan, and they said, It's a boy. I went back to my car in the car park, hospital, and I started crying. I wasn't crying because the baby will be a boy. I was thinking about other, the other prophecies. <laughs> and, and I said, so this, this prophet or whatever, so if this is, this is one out of three, this is about 33%. No, 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 no. It can't be. I'm, I'm, I'm here to make what? I had a postdoc waiting for me in Harvard. Human rights law postdoc. I have to be in the UN. I applied. Optimistic. I wanted the best of life. I wanted to be the next UN Secretary General. And I was working hard for it. As I then, I've attended four universities in the world. One in Africa, three in the Western world. Austria, European Peace University, Bradford, US. So I was prepared for my life to get the best of life. Here come this prophecy. So baby came. Just leave it here. That was just a, in the first in December. In January, we had a Chinese man, William Law, Reverend William Law came to the church for a seminar, workshop. One, two, three, four days. Seminar, workshop on how to hold revivals. How to conduct crusades. It was just teaching with PowerPoint. At some point, he called me up. Stand up, young man. The pastor, they were there. He said, young man, what I'm teaching, you will do it. And the pastor of the church looked at me. Here again. After the service, after he has taught, he has gone, the wife came to me. If you want to, if you want success, help someone else to succeed. And I'm speaking to all of us. If you want the best of life for yourself, make it happen wherever you are. You are in the university working as, you are in your health sector, for many of you, wherever. Help that establishment. Be truthful, be honest. Put in your best. Amen. Help somebody else. So you are in the church. You are anointed. Let us see the anointing. Work hard to multiply the kingdom. Don't leave it the way you came. Am I right? No. Your testimony should not be, I came and this place is going down. No. We must multiply. We must double. In your time, it should be three, four services. In your time, that should be your testimony. Am I right? In our time, we must make things succeed, not go down. The golden rule. Matthew 7, 12. Therefore, whatever you want men to do for you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. If you want success, help someone else to succeed. Number three, fundamental law. Number one, what did I say? Number two, 
Number three, the law of potentiality. The law of what? Potentiality. You have potentials. And you must know that. You must know that. That God has equipped you. He has anointed you. The anointing you've already received, manifest it. It says, you can do all things. He has empowered you. The world is waiting for you. Romans 8 verse 19. The entire world is waiting for you because God has deposited so much in you. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. God has deposited things on you. Don't let it waste. Psalm 139 verse 14, the NLT. Psalm 139 14 says, Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You have potentials. God has made you so complex for a purpose. Hallelujah. I've been created for a purpose. To have dominion, to subdue, to reign, to rule. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God is mindful of you, Psalm 8 verse 4. That's why he has crowned you with glory and with honor. The law of potentiality. You are a God. Amen. You have potentials to manifest. There's something God has put inside of you. You can't go to the grave with it. There are songs to be there are books. There are cities for you to build by yourself. Companies, institutions are waiting for you. Don't say, I'm a nobody. You are a somebody. Yes, you can. Hallelujah. The law of potentiality. You have potentials. Look at a man all that. We have potentials to take over Bradford. We have potentials. We can. This nation, the world, globally, we have it. You and I, together, one can chase a thousand. Two can chase what? Ten thousand. We are more than one. We are more than a hundred. We are more than two hundred here. We should be able to multiply. That's how many? Two billion. Amen. You, can, you are the engineers. One is what? One can chase a thousand. Two with what? Three is what? Four is what? Five is what? Six is what? It is this way? Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. You have potentials. You have potentials. Number four. The law of intentionality. So number one, the royal law. Number two. Number three. Number four. The law of intentionality. You must be intentional in your churches. Don't just see two men dancing before you. Or anyone, I close my eye, I open it. Which one should you show it? No. Someone called us one day. Said, uh, God is telling me that I should do this. And, and, and we asked years ago, over 10 years ago, and we asked, How did God? How did He, speak? How did he, how did he tell you? Oh, I, I, I prayed. Uh, I told God that if I wake up from my, from my bed, I put my slippers on the floor. If the slippers move, therefore, uh, therefore, Therefore, what I want to do is right. So I slept. When I woke up, the shoes I left there moved. It will move for you. Who we'll look at the sister and say, Come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't come and lie. The slippers will definitely what? It will move. And that's why you want to take your choice. What you want to do? That decision. We shake our head. Be what? Intentional. 
be intentional. The law of intentionality. Daniel 1 verse 8. But Daniel was intentional, proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile it. He was purposed, he was intentional on what he wanted to do. You must be intentional. I used to, anytime I talk about this, I talk about my chest of marriage. When we came, we were bachelors, like most of us. So there was, there was, there was the tendency to, to be distracted. Yes, am I right? Bachelors, yeah. Wave your hand. Bachelors, wave your hand. The brothers that are looking for. Femi, I can see you. Wave your hand. You're hiding. So there was a tendency to be distracted. Born again, tongue speaking. Yes. Some sisters will come, dance around, undergraduates, master students. Read this for me. Read this for me. It's they have a purpose. <laughs> From one of our friends, one of our friends, he was good in reading. Very good in reading for them. <laughs> so after work, he went to read. I must submit tonight or tomorrow, please. He said, went to help to read. As so reading, the person went to the bathroom, came back with not gun. Transparent. He couldn't read again. Hallelujah. So as we were studying and students, we were the only, I was the only student in the church when we started the church in Bradford, the first church. So I had to mingle with all the students, bringing them to church. I have to be open to them. They are in the house. They are, they are all over, every 24-7. Boys, girls. And God will always tell me, this one is a sister. Even though you like this one. It's a sister. Hallelujah. A sister, a sister, a sister. And that kept us until Pastor Andra came our way. This is it. Go for it. Hallelujah. Some of those around you are sisters. Some of those around you are brothers. Don't distract them. Amen. They are brothers, some of them, and some of them be intentional. Go plainly. Amen. Some of them are hit. They are the ones. Don't dance around the bush. I hate people hanging around for too long. Say it, brother. Say it, sister. What do you want? So that you can create, so that we can know your intentions. The law of what? Daniel proposed in his heart. It was intentional. John 9 verse 4, Jesus said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. John 9 verse 4, I have proposed in my heart to do this work. I'm intentional about this work. Isaiah, 9, Isaiah 1, 19 says, If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. We are obedient, we eat the good of the land. Or you are lost. <laughs> you will be willing and obedient, and you will eat the good of the land. In the mighty name of Jesus. Not in disobedience. Colossians 3.23, the NLT. Walk willingly at whatever you do. Walk willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Walk freely, willingly at whatever you do. And God will pay you. It's God that will repay. Hallelujah. Not man. Not man. 
not man. Number five, the law of least effort. So number one, what did I say? Number two, number three, number four, number five. The law of least effort. Simple. What you can do easily and you make it big. Something that you can do easily. The least of efforts and you still get to your targets. You want to get to London. The easy one, take a flight and you are there. Am I right? Or use coach for six hours. Or train for two and a half hours, two hours. Least efforts, still at the same destination. That's the law of least effort. I must walk, stand and walk for 12 hours. Where has job? Or I have three hours of some kind of knowledge will make the same money. From home. Are you with me now? Are you getting it now? Either I go for 12 hours with your support work or whatever you do or warehouse or whatever or I have an higher knowledge. Some data, some data analysis, uh, analytics or business analysis or test and whatever. Two hours, one hour, you are at home and you make the same money. The law of least Efforts. This year, you want an extraordinary life? You must acknowledge this. You must work with this. Things that you can do easily. I used to post my me. me. I was used to having a post. I, I would take some days back. Every summer, I'm out of Bradford. I travel. I travel a lot. I enjoyed myself. I've been in the U.S., I've been in Geneva, I've gone to Austria, I've gone to Finland, I've gone to uh, all over the Eastern Europe. I'll just enjoy my summers. We're all out. I will go, I will stay in hotels. I will swim, swimming pool like a big man. Enjoy. And I'm not just doing that. I needed that break to have a good mindset before this brat was 12 hours, 10 hours. I didn't come for that. Amen? I did what? I need that to survive, but I didn't come for that. So I opened up myself to be to behave like what I want to be. Meet diplomats, speak in the UN, get to the UN, meet high professors, those I'm reading back in the booths, I will see them in conferences, present papers, and enjoy my life. The law of what? Least effort. I will take time to look for scholarships. You work for one week or two weeks to make a thousand pounds. If I spend two, three days with the career, I will apply for one scholarship. I will make some one thousand pounds. So instead of two hours of strenuous work that will not allow me to even do any research, three hours. I will make the same money. By the time you spend your two hours working, you can't do anything. You know very well. You will not do anything. But three hours of good, one hour of good research, you see one opening somewhere else that you can apply for. For a grant. And that will come in. And you'll have used those two weeks to go far in your research, in your studies, in whatever you are doing. Shout hallelujah. The law of least effort. This one talks about, like I've explained, people prefer to do what is easy and as least kind of resistance. Do what is easy. How can I do this thing easily? That's what. How can I, instead of going through all the difficulties, how can I do this thing 
Is there an easier way? That is the point. Is there an what? An easier way. You look for it. Is there any easier way? You need an information. Once you have the information, you have the knowledge, wisdom come, you are, you are there. Is there an easier way to the UN? There is. Is there an easier way to have where you want to be, to be where you want to be? There is. Is there an easier way to be married? There is. To make the right choice? There is. Live holy. Serve God. Be sincere. The husband will come. The wife will come. Is there an easier way? Study now. The best of job will come. Then you play with your life. And then when it's time for the for that big job, you are saying that you are discriminated or whatever. The easier way is to study now. And then you get it. Plus the favor of God and all that. But you play around now, you continue going. Five years. Five years is now what? Raining. Am I talking now? The easier way, trust me, do a first class. Do a distinction. Go for one or two courses, Oxford or Harvard or MIT. We came and I was speaking to our students in the university about all this. Then one of the boys took it. I've shared it here. He applied to Harvard while he was still a student here, IBM student. He applied to Harvard for a short course just for three months. And he was called to come over. So he went to Harvard while still a student in here, IBM, International Business Management. So he went to do three months in Harvard. Brought those, his modules back to his program here, transferred them over. They were credited to his program here in Bradford. When he finished, he has Bradford, MSc, and he has Harvard included in the CV. When he finished, he had the best of jobs. He's now in Geneva. A scholarship, Oxford MBA. Who will not come for an Harvard student? An Harvard graduate. There is, we have to uphold, observe, they acknowledge the law of what? Least effort. I'm taking time on this because it's very necessary. Hallelujah. Let me run quickly. Romans 9, 16. Can I attest to that? Romans 9, 16. Hallelujah. So then it is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God that shows mercy. You can do all that you are doing. There is a God that can do things easily for you if you know the right way. Number six and seven. Number six, the law of reliability. Be reliable. The law of what? Reliability. My time is off now. The law of reliability. Be trustworthy and dependable. Proverbs 11.13, the NLT says, A gossip goes around telling secrets, but those who are trustworthy can keep a confidence. Be reliable, be trustworthy. Don't be a microphone. They say it here, they will hear it in Toronto. Your friend tells you something, before you know it, they will hear it. In where? Where? Australia. The law of reliability. Luke 6, verse 10 to 12, the NLT. Again, it is said, Luke 6, Luke 16, verse 10 to 12. Again, it is said, if you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? 
And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? Hallelujah. Reliability. I've worked with people for the few years I've existed, even as a pastor. I've seen some people very, very reliable. You give them a task, they will come back and explain and even do extra. And they will say, oh, we don't need all this. But it will be so open that you cannot fault anything. I don't want to go to some extents. We have, have seen, if I go to, I mean, you, you cannot take it. But I have to say it as a pastor so that it can help us as we go. I've got some people that you give them, I'm trying to be careful because they're going to, you can't take it. You give them an assignment, go and cook for the church. Even the monkey left, they will bring it back. It's hard now, it's hard now, isn't it? They will what? Bring it back. And I said, but we don't need it. Maybe it, it took another one month or two months to, before we can cook. So yes, that extent of that is, and I've got them. I don't need to close my eye to doubt. But for some, it's well. Now it is hard now, so don't, it is hard now, is it? But I have to say it so that we know how it works. It's heavy now, is it? The Lord will help us. Reliability. Reliability. If you want the extraordinary God to manifest for you, you must be reliable. Finally, finally, my time is up now. Hallelujah. Where am I? Number finally, let me close here. The law of sowing and harvest. The law of sowing and harvest. Quickly. If you read Galatians 6 verse 7, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. So when something happens around me and I look at it, oh, I need to correct myself. But if I look around and it's not me, I'll say, no, no, this is not me. This is from the devil. This is not me. I never, I never done this before in life. So it cannot be, it cannot be by God catching up with me. No. Whatever you sow, you will what? You reap. It says there, the generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Proverbs 11, 24, 25 says, There is one who scatters, yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to what? Poverty. The generous soul will be made rich. And evil waters will also be watered. Hallelujah. Look at the, look at the, look at, look at the results. Amos 9, 13. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper, when the treader of grapes, him who sows, when the of grapes, him who sows seed, and all that, the mountains shall drip with sweet wine, and all hills shall flow into it. The plowman will overtake the reaper. Now the message translation of that, quickly. Amos 9, 13, they met, then that's my last scripture. Yes, indeed. It won't be long now, God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast, your head will swing. Your head will swing. One thing fast on the heels of the world, the other. You won't be able to keep up. The blessings of the Lord, one after the other. Before you know it, the boy, the young man has appeared. Before you know it, the best of jobs. Before you know it, you have another opening, a business investment that doesn't 
affect your job. You won't be able to cash up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, blessings. Another one, what? Blessings. Like wine pouring up the mountains and rise up for the extraordinary blessings. Hallelujah. Clap, clap for Jesus. Before you know it, doors are opening. Favor from the north. Favor from the south. Favor in front of you. Favor by your side. Favor behind. Before you know it, you won't be able to catch. Before you grab one bless, another one is waiting for you. Come and have this. Before you know it, come and have it. I'm in London. Come and have it. New York, come. It's calling for you. That shall be your case. Why not begin to bless the name of the Lord? Just appreciate him. Talk to God this afternoon. Bless him and worship him. Give him praise. Give him glory.